It is, though, my great pleasure to introduce now Professor Hala Zraikad, who is a National Health and Medical Research Fellow, Head of Biomaterials and Tissue Engineering Research uh, Unit in the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Sydney. Is that all right? That's any fine. more Any more words? No. That's it, okay. Um, and, and your work is revolutionising bone transplants and treatments. So, uh, look, bone is the second most transplanted uh, tissue in the world. It's second to blood, yet the options up until now or more recently have been more limited for synthetic bone substitutes. So can you give me some background to your research? Right, so bone, if it's fractures normally, it will heal itself. But if the defect becomes larger than normally, it needs help. And what we use is what we call synthetic bone substitutes. And these are materials that you make in the lab and you put them in the bone. But if you look at the bone, and I have an example here, it's highly porous from inside. So it has large holes into it, just like Swiss cheese, but in the outside it's quite firm. So your skeleton is actually very strong, very light, and very porous at the same time. So how can you make a synthetic material that is highly porous to allow for blood and cells to go through it, but also mechanically strong? And this has been the dilemma in every synthetic material available on the market. So that if you have a defect in your leg and you put a material in there, it will actually crush because it's, it's brittle. So what we have developed, and this, this is an invention we came up with in 2011, is we looked at the properties of the bone and we thought, what can we learn from what our skeleton does? So it has collagen, it has also uh, calcium in your bone. And so one or either of them in your bone would not be enough to provide the skeleton for what, with what it is. So both of them are necessary. We went back and looked at nature and adapted that and developed this new material. And this is the one that is incorporating or using 3D printing, is that right? So we fir you first make the material with uh, uh, whatever primitive methods we have, sponge template method, it's not actually primitive, this is what they use now in the clinic. But now we recently adapted the 3D printing so that a surgeon can then look back at the defect and ask us, he will say, program it to that defect and give me the exact shape and size. We just do it in no time and give that to him. What's most important as well is you can, this material was able to regenerate bone without having to use any biologic or cells. What's it feel like when you touch it? It's beautiful. It's almost like, like pasta, but a sort of a plastic feel, is it right? Yeah. So it's now become, uh, we have for the first time developed something, synthetic ceramic, that is tough, strong, and highly porous, and also bioactive, meaning it encourages the growth of the bone. So my producer today, Caitlin Sorry, she had a really bad accident, has this huge metal sort of plate in her arm that I can hardly look at, it frightens me. Um, would that therefore be uh, redundant in the future? Is that what we're talking about here? This is what we're hoping for, because what also happens is if you put that in the defect, it will regenerate bone, but eventually it will be resorbed and replaced completely by bone. And the materials, we know that it's not toxic to the body. Once it's resolved, it's excreted through normal physiological processes. And we're already seeing this already, aren't we? We have, okay. we have. So what, what then do you see as the future of 3D technology, 3D printing technology? Can you see a future where there will be almost a complete revo sort of a revolution, I suppose, in the way that we approach medicine? Yes. Uh, well, one thing that everybody in the field talks about is personalized medicine. So you can then make a material that suits the defect, the size, and the patient to put in the body. Okay. Uh, Stephen Stockwell is here from Triple J's Hack, and he has a question from the audience. Stephen, take it away. Actually, it is me with a question. Oh. I've got Jennifer over here. We're, you're very, you're very pretty, Stephen. You. <laughs> We've got a question here from Jennifer. That's such an exciting development and it, it's really wonderful to learn about it. I was wondering, is it only suitable for long burns or it al is it also suitable for, um, I guess, defects in, say, jaw or scalp or, or skull or other parts? Uh... Brilliant questions. We have, uh, no, it's suitable for any bone defect at this stage. Smaller defects is far easy to, do re to repair. The challenge is larger defects. We have experiments at the moment going on for maxillofacial regeneration, for 
areas like that, which is very, very difficult to regenerate. Okay. Yeah. You've spent 22 years working on these, this project, essentially, and it's gone through many iterations, I imagine. Marcus Zusak was with us earlier today, and he was talking about the power of failure, how it's really good to have failure to get ahead. So, Harla, can I, can I hear your perspective on messing things up, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, this material, not 22 years. This is uh, since 2011. Okay. <laughs> but I have been in the field for 22 years. Failure is exactly what, uh, what drives us to go to where we are. I mean, the failures you encounter is far more than what anyone would expect, particularly with the current funding situation. We rely on every dollar to do the research. So, uh, and this is, uh, I'm a mentor for my people, and this is the thing that I always say, if you don't have a passion for it, don't do it, because failure is far more than successes in this field. It's extraordinary to hear what you've been doing and to touch and feel what is this, 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 the future of, 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 of what you're talking about here. So, I, I'm so excited, can you tell? Let us give a <laughs> round of applause to Professor Harlas Rykatz. Thank you very much Thank you. from the University of Sydney. Thank you.